Hi everybody, this is Scott Davenport and I wanted to share with you today another feature that's coming in Perfect Photo Suite 9.5, uh, the Line Mask tool. And I'm really thankful to On1 to listening to their users and bringing this functionality back. So if you are a previous user of Suite 8 or Suite 7, we used to have the Perfect Mask module and one of the tools we had in there was called the Pen Tool. It let you draw you know, polygons, shapes around various things to perform masks. Uh, with Perfect Photo Suite 9 and all the masking tools folded into layers and effects, that was great because we had powerful masking tools in both layers and effects. But we lost the pen tool. With 9.5 we get the line mask tool and it shows up over here in your tool well with this interesting polygon shape and a little plus key. And I'll show you a couple of examples of how we can use this. So I have this uh, image here of a, a door in Venice, and I'm going to bring this into effects because I want to add some style to this. And uh, in particular, I want to add some more some punch and some contrast. So I'm going to start with dynamic contrast. And this is for the image as a whole, and you know, I'm pretty happy with the natural setting. But I want to add more uh, of the details and get these you know, little different textures coming out of the door itself. So I'm going to add a second dynamic contrast filter. And as I adjust the sliders, uh, my eyes are watching this door. And I'm going to just slide up small a little bit and then back off the medium and the large. Something like that. And maybe around there. And uh, that looks good for the door. Now it's a bit overkill on the, uh, the other parts of the image and uh, I don't want that. So what I will do is go to the mask menu and I'm going to invert the mask. That's removing dynamic contrast from the image entirely. And now I'll use the line mask. You know, previously I would have had to get like the masking bug and start trying to place, you know, gradients around and, you know, add another gradient and rotate it and try to figure out how am I going to get the mask lined up and so on and so forth. And that's, you know, cumbersome. It's doable but cumbersome. Or I could use the masking brush and try to work through here and you know the hard edges you know, they might work pretty well with the perfect brush. I'd probably have a lot of cleanup to do because of all the different tones and textures in here. With the line mask it's very simple. I'll just click points and you know single clicks to set a point and I'm just working my way right around the door frame and then when you close the polygon You'll see that this little cursor changes a little circle there. That means I've closed it. And now I have a uh, little paint can with a minus in it. That means I could remove the effect or I could add the effect. And I'm going to add it because I want the contrast to show back up. So you can see my mask looks very clean, very neat. Control M to see the mask. And that was much quicker and much faster than trying to brush things in. So that's one example of line mask. Let me grab another image and I'll show you another example of how you can use this tool. So another use for the line mask is just a more general geometric shape. For this image, I've added a tone enhancer, which has done nice things to the sky, but it's made the buildings a little bit dark. And I'd like to warm those up a little bit. And I thought about using a sunshine filter, so I'll adding that. And I like what it's done to the buildings, added uh, you know, just a little, a little more brightness. I could even play with the warmth a little bit, maybe warm them up just a touch. But I don't like what it's doing to some of the areas of the sky. It's blowing things out and um, removing some of those uh, nicer details that were there from the tone enhancer. So how to use uh, the line mask to apply it just to these buildings. I'm going to do a command I or control I on a PC to invert the mask. And so I'm hiding the sunshine filter from the entire image. Grab the line mask from the tool well, and the key here is to play with the feather. I don't want a hard-edged mask like I did with the door on the previous photo. I want something softer, and I'll try um, something in 30% range. And then I will just kind of do a rough polygon-shaped thing around the edges of these, uh, these buildings and this bridge here. And I'm not having to be incredibly precise, just clicking a few points all the way around. And let me, there we go, close that. I have my icon now for painting it in. I'll click once. And then very quickly, I've got that nice warmth added to just the buildings. 
Now if I do Control M, we can look at the mask. You can see the mask has got a nice soft edge. And even though I wasn't exact and precise working around all these little intricate areas with the masking brush, the perfect brush, it's okay. And using the line mask was much, much faster to get to a result that I'm very happy with. So those are two examples of how you can use the line mask coming in Perfect Photo Suite 9.5.